Kenya's NCBA Bank, one of the tier ones, top three actually by balance sheets, uh, reported a 120% rise in net earnings for 2021 to over $99 million. As the bank slashed loan loss provisions which had been made in 2020 in anticipation of severe economic damage from the pandemic. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the results. Net earnings, of course, are the most headline grabbing number, but that triple digit jump is largely a reflection of the 45% fall in loan loss provisions. In management's view, the worst of the economic damage from the pandemic has been largely accounted for at this point. The income lines, however, also do make for very interesting reading in line with the 2% fall in the total loan portfolio interest income from those loans was down 2.3% to about $196 million. Interest income from government securities, however, that rose by nearly 21% to about $168 million. At over 18%, NCBA's stock of non-performing loans is 500 basis points over the sector average and more than double some of its competitors like Equity Bank. We'll explore that in detail in about a moment. Now, where is demand for credit with tenor of say a year or longer is pretty weak demand for super short-term nanoscale lending has been quite robust and even that is a bit of an understatement even in the year of the pandemic the lending products that ncba offers through safaricom specifically m shwari and Feliza, they grew by double digits lending volumes last year for example rose by over a third a few hours ago, I spoke to the NCBA Managing Director, John Gashora. I started our conversation by exploring why demand for long and medium-term credit in the private sector is contracting. A lot of it has to do with the fact that during this COVID season, um, you know, companies are not making uh, massive tapex investments. And for that reason, there has been soft uptick of loans. And therefore, given our very strong deposit growth, the place the way we could place our money was primarily government securities. And, and that's, that's that strong demand, in, in, or rather that strong growth in, in deposits. Could, could you explain some of the drivers around that? Because I'm looking at it in, in, the, in the context of the wider macroeconomic picture that we have in the Kenyan economy. People lost their jobs in the course yes. of COVID. Uh, incomes were cut significantly yes. as well. So what's ex what explains that strong growth in deposits that we're seeing? I think, the, um, I think what explains it is, uh, is twofold. One is, uh, one is the fact that... Um, you know, specifically to NCBA, that we are, we have created a lot of trust with our customers, and therefore uh, they have continued to trust us with their deposit. But overall, as far as the industry is concerned, is the fact that when there is low investment, it means that more companies, more SMEs, more individuals are holding on to their deposits, as opposed to reinvesting it. Usually, you see a lot of this money go out into buying buildings, buying real estate, investing in growth of companies investing in uh, hiring uh, workers for companies. What we are seeing today is that because those investments are not being made in as much um, strong ways as has happened in the past, then more companies and more individuals are willing, uh, are keeping their money in savings a bit longer than usual. I just want to touch briefly on, on your digital lending portfolio. Some pretty interesting growth numbers there. You've gone from, I believe it was just under $3 billion uh, pre-COVID in 2019, that the equivalent number for last year was about $5.1 billion dollars it's a really strong surge in growth in the short-term lending market um is where's that growth concentrated is all of it m or is it a combination of m and fuliza it's actually a combination we, we have actually seen more growth in fuliza than in m uh, i think fuliza has come in very very strongly um m has not been as strong to tell you the truth i think uh, overall uh, year over year uh, deposit well sorry the um disbursements in uh, insurance may be softer than they were a year ago. So a lot of that growth has come from uh, Feliza. Feliza has, uh, being a new, I guess, a relatively newer product, a much more convenient product to use, uh, very unplanned credit, if I may say, is where we have seen a lot of the growth in, in the past one year. Okay. Um, how concerned are you, um, given the, the, the passage of the, the 2021 Central Bank Amendment Act last year and the, 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 the trend that we're seeing among regulators now to talk about looking into the fees that are being charged on these facilities, uh, providing greater disclosure to consumers? How concerned are you that in this year, or perhaps even in 2023, you might face a situation where fees are imposed or limits on fees are imposed by regulators? I think to answer that is to, to remind uh, our viewers that m and Feliza are bank products. And for that reason, they are fully regulated by the Central Bank of Kenya. We have full approvals for those products. I think the act changes, the amendments that were done, 
or to bring those uh, lenders that were not under regulation to bring them back into regulation. But for us, we are already regulated. So are we fearful? No, because we have always worked with the central bank. But the central bank did also impose uh, limits on charges when, when the COVID pandemic hit. So uh, going by that train of thought, it stands to reason that they might say, well, you know, this is something we might want to look into again in the future. That's, that, is, uh, that is always under their purview and uh, products get reviewed all the time. So I'm sure when we go for a review, we'll have that conversation. Are we afraid? As I said, today we have full approvals from the central bank. So I think it will be the usual conversations that we have had with them, which have always been friendly. Okay, um, so let's talk about NPLs. Um, when we had this conversation last November, I believe, uh, we're looking at a, a gross NPL number of around 16%. That's gone up a bit to around 18% by end 2021. How much, much higher than the sector average um, and more than double some of your competitors. What explains this, this stickiness in the NPLs that we're seeing? Is it highly concentrated in a handful of your corporate clients? Yes, uh, indeed. It's, it's a few corporate clients that are large corporate clients that really contribute to that number. Now, I think when we spoke last summer, I did say that what you'd have seen us do in 2020 is we took uh, provisions in a very aggressive manner. And we ended up with the provisions of over 20 billion shillings. And I explained then that provisions are leading indicator of NPL uh, deterioration. And therefore, what you see in 2021 is that whereas we have taken a lot less provisions, because of the provisions we took in 2020, those fears that we had, those risky customers that we feared may fall in 2021, indeed, a good number of them did fall in 2021, and therefore contributing to the growth in, in the NPL ratio. Do I think we're over the hump? I'm, I can confidently say that we're over the hump. Again, provisions being a leading indicator of our view of risk, the fact that in 2021 we have taken a lot less provisions tells you that it is a leading indicator that going forward NPO ratio should also come down. Okay, so what sort of numbers are you looking at? What's, what's Walk us through the glide path, so to speak, uh, on your view of NPLs. I, I know you've asked me these questions before and I think I always say we don't give for looking statements. All I can say is uh, to be significantly lower than what it was in 2021. A conversation there with John Gashora, Managing Director at NCBA Bank.